Hi guys, welcome back to Double Zero Garage and part three of the Charger Cooling System. So before you put the bolts back in to the water pump, obviously some of the threads, I don't think you can see that there, may well be clogged up with crud and, uh, and stuff from what the length of time they've been inside the, the engine, front of the engine. Just give them a quick clean with a bit of a wire brush just to get the dirt out of the threads, make sure the threads are clean so they don't shear off when you tighten, thing, tighten things up because that's the last thing you want to happen. And of course you make sure that all the bits of dirt and flakes of rust that you're cleaning off here do make sure that they fall all over the paintwork here Carl because that's the right way to do it. And you do that the four times, which I'll not bore you with, but you do that all four times to get the four bolts in nice and clean, ready to go ahead. And there we are, nice clean threads. Just another three then to do them. Back in a minute. Alright, so we're going to start by getting the water pump on today. Now, this is the new water pump, as you can see, it's nice and clean. No noise in the bearings at all. Uh, it does come with a gasket, so when you order a water pump, or if you need to order a water pump, bear in mind they do come with the gasket in the box. And then it's just a case of getting the gasket on, getting the gasket lined up. Now it doesn't matter which way around you do it, uh, whether you put the gasket on the front of the engine and then put the water pump on, or whether you put the gasket on the water pump and then put the water pump on. But just the hard part is making sure the gasket stays in place. So I'm going to use a tiny amount of, uh, of sealant just a tiny amount, no you don't need much, it's really, literally just to hold the gasket in place when it uh, when it goes on, so just a light covering all the way around the pump. Of course some of you uh, fellas and fellow wrestlers out there might want to put a glove on when you're doing this. Obviously health and safety and, uh, and all that just to make sure. Because it is awful stuff, it does go everywhere. And that's not the kind of thing that you really ideally want on your fingers, I suppose. And as I say, I'm just putting a small amount on just to make the gasket hold on to the pump better when I mount it. And I'll also put a small amount on the gasket itself when it goes onto the car. do for that. Let me just take the gasket out of the bag. does come with instructions but obviously you don't read the instructions you just ignore them altogether. Now as you might be able to see on here the gasket on the four holes you've got three of the holes that are pretty much straight round and one that's shaped. Now that does follow the pattern on the water pump so this particular gasket goes on in that direction so it mounts up with all the holes and everything matches and lines up properly. So it's simply a case of putting it on it will stick straight away to the sealant or instant gasket or whatever you use. Probably wouldn't advise using something along the lines of Evo stick, that's probably not a good idea. 
I definitely don't use sugar glue. That just wouldn't work at all. So any kind of sealant can go on. Any instant gasket or sealant. Well, as I say, you, now you just need a touch of the stuff. Just a touch. You don't need a lot. And the same with the gasket again. Just a very light covering. Literally all you want it to do is be a little bit tacky. Or slightly sticky. So it stays in place when you're mounting everything. And if you have your bolts ready to go, then you can actually manage to put it on. Put the bolt through a couple of holes, line them up, start putting them in. And then that will give you the ability to get the, the rest in. So just quickly finish rubbing this around here. Now a lot of you fellas might be watching this thinking, well, you don't need to put sealant on. And strictly speaking, no you don't. Uh, the gasket should just go straight onto the water pump and then straight on the front of the engine. But due to the age of the engines, and you don't know how many ham-fisted gorillas have been in there before you, that may not be perfectly flat at the front of the engine so putting the gasket on doesn't always cover it properly if you put a little bit of sealant on just to make it sticky that will make sure that it sticks to any slight imperfections on the front of the engine and it will hold it in place and hopefully give it a, a better seal it should be good to go with that now also at your water pump when you go to actually put the water pump on, as you can see on this one, there's a hole at the bottom there. That's when your water pump gives up and dies and your, your coolant will start pouring out there when the water pump dies. Now that bit goes to the bottom. So if that's on the bottom, then it goes on that way around with the odd shaped flange at the top of the uh, at the top of the engine. And the old water pump that I took off did actually say top on there, so you knew which way around the mountain is. But the easiest way to um, to re realise which way it goes which way it goes around is that hole always goes to the bottom. So we'll put a couple of bolts through. Actually, I'll put the one in the side there. And I'll put one in that side. And I'll take out the paper that I didn't protect any rubbish or flaky bits falling in there. And it's simply a case of lining it all up, making sure it goes in, put the bolts in the hole, start tightening that up by hand, and the frame on the other side. And that will hold that one in place. And just get the other two bolts and then the top. And you notice the water pump's not exactly in place yet. Purely because I want to make sure it goes in level. And then we'll just ease it into place with this. Snugging it down a little bit.
tightening the bolts up. Don't go too high, you don't need to be too tight. Because you don't want to shear one off in the front of the engine. And if you're worried about it, there's if you have the manual for the car, the specs and the torque settings for this will be in there. But you want to go as tight as you can. Just make sure there's a perfect seal around it without actually getting to the point where you want to shear something. So that then is the water pump fitted. Spins freely, there's no noise. Everything's on there. And you can take a bit of the paper, and this is a quick white ground. Just get any extra sealant off there. And that's the water pump. Fitted once again. Well, the new water pump fitted once again, so that's all on there. We'll move on to the next part and uh, do the thermostat housing. Right, okay, so now we're going to fit the thermostat housing. Now, I didn't order a thermostat housing because there's nothing wrong with this one once it was cleaned up. You don't need a thermostat housing. All I bought was a thermostat, which is in the garage. I'll go and get that in a minute. The main thing is your thermostat housing needs a gasket. Now, normally you would find that when you order a thermostat, it comes with a gasket. This one didn't, however. So rather than get the agro going out and buying another gasket, I just made one. Now they're fairly straightforward to make. You just get a bit of thin card or gasket paper and a dirty hammer, has to be dirty. And it's literally a case of cutting a square bit of cardboard, oversized for the thermostat housing. And then you put it on the thermostat housing and you just tap around the outside with a hammer, tap around the middle with a hammer and tap over there with a the hammer. And that will leave the marks and the outline of where to cut so you can just cut your paper down. Now, in the same principle as it was before, it's uh, still a case of put a little bit of sealant on, even if you're using the genuine gasket. If you do prefer to use the genuine gasket, then obviously when you buy a thermostat, make sure you get a gasket with it as well. Other than that, I'm just going to go and get ready to put this on. But of course, first of all, I need the gasket, I need the thermostat. So I'll just nip away and get that, I'll be back in a second. Now, for those of you that have never done this before, this is your thermostat. Its job is to control the water flowing around the engine. So when your engine, when you first fire your engine up, there will be no water flowing around the engine and through the radiator. It will just be the water that's in the engine. As the engine heats up and comes to temperature, this will open and allow the water to flow through the radiator and back into the engine, which is what helps keep the engine cool. And they're dead easy to fit. They fit in there like that. And then you just put that straight into the thermostat housing with the gasket. Now, the gasket that I've made, I'm fairly certain it's going to sit over the top of that. So, what we'll do is we'll put the gasket onto the engine in this instance, and then we'll lower that on top of it. So, a bit of sealant again just to go around the sides of it. And same principle as last time, you don't need an awful lot of this, it's literally just to make it. The, um, the face of the engine sticky enough to hold the gasket in place while you're putting the bolts on. So we'll just cover that in there like that. Now once again a little bit of this does go an awful long way. And you don't want so much on that when you put the thermostat housing and gasket on and you tighten things up that it squeezes out on the inside because obviously the last thing you want is any form of sticky sealant inside the water jackets of the engine or inside the radiator to avoid it getting clogged up. So once you get this all the way around and you're happy with it all, make it nice and sticky. Run your fingers around the inside of the thermostat housing and just take out any extra that's in there. Better off to get it on your hands and clean it off than it is to have it floating around inside the engine, causing all manner of blockages and damage. So that's sitting there nicely. Now, 
Let's just get this on ready to go. As you can see, it's just made out of a, a cereal packet when I've done it. But you can use any thin cardboard to do it. So we'll just get a little bit around here as well. again not an awful lot and don't forget to clean the excess off or wipe the excess off inside so that it doesn't actually slip or drop inside the engine doesn't matter if it squeezes through on the outside you can just take that off with a cloth That. Now it doesn't matter which direction you put it in at, it'll sit in in that direction or that direction, it doesn't really matter. I think we'll go that way, this will share how it is. And it's simply a case of putting your gasket over the top, the gasket on, and then holding that in place. Roll that down into there, and then take your bolts again and start feeding the bolts in. We have to move it around a little bit. So you can always pick it up a bit, push that through. should line up, just go straight in, there we are, and they're ready to go in, and again I'm not tightening them down all the way yet, just to make sure this goes in evenly and nice and smooth. Torque settings for this will be in the manual if you have one. If you don't have one, I would advise on getting the manual and then just tight enough so that it's not going to move. And then that's all in there. And if you have a look down there, you can see the thermostat's perfectly in place and that's pretty much ready to go. So that's the thermostat uh, housing and the new thermostat back in with the gasket. So hopefully that will seal that. And then we'll move on to the next step which is going to be putting the, um, the radiator hoses in and the radiator and then we need to sort out the fan belts. Now one of the problems I'm going to have that kind of gives me slugs is as I said in the last video I'm not putting the air conditioning back in basically because it doesn't work, it wasn't connected and I live in the UK, I don't need it. It's an ugly thing on the front of the engine. It weighs as much as a small scooter or a small, a small moped. And I want the extra 2.47 horsepower it's going to give us a quarter of a mile of this gallon that I'm probably going to get off it as well. So I'm not leaving that in. Uh, I'm not putting that back in, which means I will need to organise some kind of pulley to go here for the fan belts. Um, but I'm working on that one. And uh, as soon as I get that one in, I'll, uh, I'll get that done. I'm, I'm going to leave it there for today. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow and see how far else, how far we can get with the rest of it.